We are down to our top four in the world, all still mathematically in this hunt for this year's gold buckle and championship trophy. Our final four starts with Luciano De Castro, but look at that. In a few moments, we'll see Jose Vitor Lemming. Very contemplative at the moment, but you can bet when he gets his chance to use and let his actions speak louder than his words, he will do his best to have it happen yet again, possibly for the third time this week. Luciano De Castro in round number three, Mac, simply trying to get a first score. And I'll be honest, that's surprising. Yeah, it is really surprising, but he's got a chance for a big one right here. JW Berserk, if he has his day, I think this could be huge. Yeah, this could be really huge. Justin, the interesting thing to me is the three, the three out of the four guys, of the, the last four here, were rookies last year. If the rest of the bull riding world doesn't shape up, they're going to get shipped out by these four because they're going to take it over. But this is a really great matchup. We're going to leap out of here, and he's just going to swallow his head about the first jump, and he's just going to keep getting it. He's going to step forward and swallow it again. This was a great matchup, but I look for Luciano uh, to come in big. Just want to remind our fans, we've seen a clock malfunction, excuse me, a few times tonight. The judges always hand time these rides as well, so there's no question they are going to get it right. Meanwhile, Luciano on the clock, he's now down to 20 seconds, still prepping with that rope. J-Dub said what Berserk's going to do. Let's see if he follows that pattern. Now close to 10, there's the knot. Luciano, oh boy, Berserk just wanted to find somebody. And it was Luciano De Castro that ended up being the contact. You know, it's such a big difference when you see a bull that keeps changing the rhythm. You're talking about timing and, and that just throws, kind of throws a wrench in your timing. And this is a really cool bull right here. Boy, you get to the you get to the whistle on this one, you're gonna be a bunch. 44 points. The struggles continue for one of the top men in the world. And there you see what the judges thought. Consistency right there, that's for sure. 22s across the board. And there you see it again. Boy, oh boy. Bullfighters trying to help Luciano out, but nothing was gonna stop Berserk. Sort of like our top two men in the world. Another guy who's trying to put himself in the mix, but is running out of opportunity, Mac. Claudio Montagna Jr. in this round, he faces super group. Yeah, and you know, this is this is another one of the more rideable bulls, I feel like, in this round for these guys. He picked him. Claudio needs to get it done right here. This is this is his chance. He needs to finish the deal right here. Well, a lot like some of the other top riders, Ty, right? The book on Claudio Montagna Jr., a double event winner, by the way, this season, right? He just hasn't had the consistency at the top that the guys like Lemmy and Pacheco have. He seems ready. One of the reasons why he got that pretty good pick, Mac, is because he bumped off at six seconds last night. Ty, I'd love to see you break this down with the Telestrator because it was just a little mis either miscorrection or somewhere that the bull got him in position and then it snowballed from there. Well, yeah, you know, the bull keeps doing the same thing and you see him, he come out, he, he turns back to the right. Now you're gonna see jump and kick now. And he looks set down, you know, he looks like he's right where he wants to be as this bull's coming around. You see his hips get to the outside and he misses that with jump that one time. You see him get reared back. You know, you hear Justin and I talk about it over and over again, and we've seen quite a few rides tonight where the guys, when they don't miss that jump, things keep going smooth. But what, that's another problem with liking them into your hand too much. You get to just kind of rocking back and relying on that that second chance that you have to pull yourself over there, you've got to keep riding. It's never about hanging on to your rope. As a group, the riders have been successful. 20 qualified rides, 91 is the top, Kolbaba Noguchi. Kaiki Shaco's number one with no intention of relinquishing his spot, but Jose Vitor Lemmy has a desire and fire within. One of them's probably going to lift that trophy up. 
We have two Titans locked in quite a tussle. Our world number one and number two. Here's your tail of the tape. Of course, Pacheco is the number one, but over the past two days, Lemmy, by virtue of his scores being just a little bit better, has been able to chip away at that lead. But it's gonna take, if not perfection, near perfection for one of these two men to walk away this year's champion. As we have seen for many years, you have Pacheco next to Silvano Alves, Jose Vitor Lemme, meanwhile, a little more convivial, a little more open to being in the group and sharing his experiences with other, but they both want to win this gold buckle just as badly. You've got Jose Vitor Lemme about to go, Mac. He has chosen bottoms up, and there is a very good reason he went with this bull. Yeah, this is a bull that he's had huge success on in the past. The bull's gonna be to the left with everything he's got. Look for Jose to come at him with everything that he's got. I think he can be a ton of points, win the go round on this bull. This is a real, every matchup for him thus far has been huge, but this is the biggest to date. And Ty, I think I said it yesterday, this has basically become a staring contest between these two with a little bit of danger mixed in. Who's gonna blink first? Well, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think Jose's gonna blink, and 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 so far the ice man doesn't look like he's ready to blink either. I can tell you that Jose, the last two years, has looked as good as anybody I've ever seen at the PBR World Finals, and he has 1,000% confidence. And I can tell you. When you're in the zone that he's in, he believes he can ride any bull here. And I'm telling you, that's powerful when you feel like that. And uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be one for the ages. We are getting right now, we're getting the chance to witness a slugfest of two guys that are really riding great going at it as hard as they can for a world championship and a million dollar bonus. J Dub, you are literally or at least figuratively, along for the ride with this one. Bottoms up from you and your partners at TNT Bucking Bulls. I tell you what, this, this guy feeling his oats, he feels really good today. I look for a good trip out of both of them. I think Jose wins the battle. I didn't think Lambert could get him nailed down to 92, but it's gonna be close. He's gonna be right in the door getting it on. And Jose's done rode him twice for over 90. It's going to be the same here. The bull feels really good today, I feel. We know it, the bull's really itching to get out of there. He dressed it up as best he could. Jose Vitor Lemmy says, let it ride. If it's 91 points or better, he moves to the event lead. 91 and a quarter, Mac, would give him the round lead, but it's not there. 89 and three quarters, pretty darn close. And it's really good. I mean, this guy did everything he could on a really good bull from JW right there. I mean, you can't ask anything more out of Joe Say. He got every point out of the bull. He's placing in the round as of now with that score. That's a big, big deal. Meanwhile, we should get used to this. Pacheco won't even look up. He is in his own world, and then Jose Vitor comes over. Thanks, JW. Thanks, his crew. Why wouldn't you? This man is on fire. That leaves one guy, our world number one in every round and in every opportunity so far this week Matt Pacheco when given the opportunity more than happy to push back he's chosen Humdinger yeah and he chose a bull it's so cool he's never been on this bull but he's seen Jose riding for a big score and that was enough for him to want to take this bull tie and, and I thought coming into this Jose had the jump on him because he could be more points on his bull. I think Kaiki now with the, the score that Jose turned in can get pretty close to that. Well, yeah, that's, you know, that's why they play the game. And the important thing to remember here and that we need to not forget is 
I still feel like Kaiki really needs a bull to spin to the right, not because of his ability. I think he can ride him going either direction in a normal circumstance, but you've got to remember he has high-grade tears of both his PCL ligament and his MCL ligament. And trust me, that is, that is a tough one in bull riding. When you've got to reach down and set that spur, it's tough. Now remember, it's his outside leg. So he's gonna, he's gonna cheat just a little bit to the outside and he's gonna rely on his good leg to help pack him around. Justin Felisco mentioned during the intermission that Pacheco has been walking around gingerly. He told Felisco it's a di very different feeling today. Now, of course, the greats find a way to make it happen, right, Justin, in terms of blocking it all out. We've seen him block it all out and do his job twice before this week. Well, you talk about the, the five hours a day he's been having to spend getting this knee worked on and rehabbed and doing everything he can. I think that's a great thing for this guy. That's five hours with no distractions that he gets to think about what he's got to accomplish. Humdinger, the last bull of the round. Will he turn out to be a bull that helps Kaiki Pacheco win a title? Let's go back to last night. Remember, guys, in the shoots, Pacheco let that clock wind all the way down. And Ty, your eyes were getting bigger and bigger as that clock approached zero. Yeah, I mean, he pushed it really close. I can guarantee I'm, I would have never lose the a world championship by not being able to get out of the shoot. I can tell you that. And you, you just don't want to push it down like that because it gets so close that you know, you're a little bit worried about him leaning a little bit and, and you get down to two seconds left and he goes off like a bomb in there and, and you know, you're in bad shape. So take care of business, especially with his bad knee. Yeah, that's where I was going with it right there. Not only that, but you can see Humdinger, he, he can have a hair trigger in there. Kaiki, I think it's so important that he doesn't bang his knee up worse in the shoot right there. Just, be as fast as you can, get a good shot, and get the heck out of there so he doesn't aggravate the team even worse. Cody, in our breakfast meeting this morning, you got animated, right, when we talked about what could have happened to Pacheco. Obviously, he dodged a bullet by getting out of there, but it could have gone very wrong last night. Well, he could have, and he waited too long, and then, he, then the bull wasn't in the greatest of shape when he took him, and he showed that it didn't really matter because he, he had to move with him. Ty's been saying that all night. You've got to ride and you've got to move with them. You can't just... You can't just sit there and get a perfect position because when they move out of the shoot, everything changes. This bull comes from Dakota Rodeo. That whole team, including Mike and Christina Heald, Pacheco looks ready. We've already seen Humdinger with a short trigger, and he's on the clock again. Marco Gucci right there. Kaiki's focus certainly on the bull. It's down to 20. There's the nine. Well, we're going to see a re-ride. Not what Pacheco or his knee probably wanted to have happen, but there is no question. With this world title race as close as it is, Pacheco has to take this. This is huge, man. This is a this is the moment that we've been waiting for. You knew something, everything wouldn't just be perfect and storybook for both of these guys. Something was gonna happen that would have a, a big, big impact on this race. Here it is, the re-ride option. I'm with you, I think Pacheco's gotta take it. But he's injured knees, got all of his bulls down so far. What does he do? The score would be 52 and a half points. And Ty, for all the years we've worked together, you've always said it. If you keep a you low take score the re -ride. like that, you exactly. take the re-ride. You, you're you're, you're it's admitting not defeat if you take this, if well, you keep you're, the score. You're, you're hoping somebody else fails and you could be thinking about that for the rest of your life. Well, what if I would have took it? I can live with losing. I can't, I can't live with not trying and giving it everything that I've got. Here's the thing, the re-ride bull has cut the cord. He'll go either direction. Cooper Davis has been 90 on him a couple of times. This is a chance for him to step up and say, hey, the world championship's mine and I'm gonna take it home. The bull will be cut the cord. And Justin, as you just framed it, this is like a cliffhanger, right? The plot has definitely thickened 
the first major decision that Kaiki has faced, I believe, right? He passed in terms of what you guys were expecting and hoping for. Yeah, but now when, when you talk about cut the cord, this is a bull that for the first year and a half I watched him, everybody loved him. He was in the gate to the right, just perfect. Now, though, the last several times I've seen him, 50% of the time, the bull goes to the left. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, we've talked about how much Silvano knows the bulls. We also have highlighted throughout the years how well Marco Aguche knows these bulls. This is a download, basically, right here. They are telling Kaiki Pacheco as much as they can about cut the cord before he walks right back up and gets into the shoots. We've got a moment, so let's check in with Leah. Joseph Victor Leme has been standing by watching this unfold. What are your thoughts on what's happening now? Olha que a gente está aqui, você está aqui esperando, olhando o que está acontecendo aqui, a decisão do coito, o que você está pensando nesse momento? Ah, eu queria assistir ele montar, torcendo para ele não se machucar mais do que ele já está. E estou feliz com a minha montaria, estou muito contente pelo meu trabalho, bem feito. Estou concentrado para a noite de amanhã. Uh, I just been watching. I want to watch him ride and uh, hope he didn't get hurt worse than he already is. And I'm just happy with my job. I got one more under my belt and I'm focused for tomorrow's round. Let's go back to your ride right there. Describe how much you dress that bull up. I said to you to describe it, to put it in your hand now. How did you do that bull? You're not so perfect. You looked like you were going to pull it up until you were going to pull it up. It was fast at the same time. Yes, I put it up for two times anteriormente. I had to get two notes of 90 to the top. And he was an excellent shooter. I believe that if I could get him to pull it up, it was a note of 90 to the top. It didn't happen the way I imagined it. Mas é, consegui fazer meu trabalho, consegui me manter focado e concentrar, concentrar agora para o touro de amanhã. Uh, I, you know, he was a great bull. I had him twice before tonight and I had 90 plus on him. And tonight I was expecting to ride him and be over 90 on him at least. And, um, you know, um, unfortunately I had 89 and three quarters, but I did my job and he was a great bull. I just want to focus for tomorrow's bull and just get a, one more under my belt. Probably the only time we're going to hear, unfortunately, 89 and three quarters, Craig. Yeah, right, I know. Only 89 and three quarters. Meanwhile, what a contrast, right? Those two boxes we were showing. The polar opposite worlds. Lemmy, relaxed. He's done his job. Pacheco, clearly, Mac, back to that icy focus that he's known for. Well. I'm really proud of the performance that we're seeing out of Pacheco. This is as gritty and as gutty as it gets with everything on the line. I, I agree, and, and, you know, this is what you want to see in a world championship battle. And, you know, I think it would be hard for Pacheco to, to ever have to try to live with not taking that re-ride and having to look back for the rest of your life and saying, well, I didn't do everything that I could have done to win it. And, that's the thing, you know, and I, I think he's a, I think he's a super talented guy. And if you're good enough to win a world championship, you ought to be good enough to, to ride this bull. And, and I, you know, I realize that the problem he, he's had with the knee, but he stepped up and he's rode everything that's been thrown at him so far. And I think this is a really interesting deal, JW. They've got cut the cord, moved over on a left-hand delivery. This bull, the last couple of years, we've always seen him out of the right. But as I said earlier, he has been liking going to the left more and more. Well, and that was the big hiccup right there when you seen the, all the Brazilians gathered around trying to talk and figure things out. It was because they was expecting the bull to be on the right-hand delivery. And then about 70% of the time, the bull would be right in the gate to ride that bend into Kaiki's hand. So he was thinking, take the re-ride. But then they looked up and they're loading the bull on the left-hand side. They have to designate what delivery they're going to put the bulls on before the event ever starts. So there was no hiccups, there was nothing being changed, funny business. He was already designated to be on this side. They didn't notice that. They, not that they fell, in, 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 fell into anything, but they was discussing it, trying to figure out what side he was going to be on, what side should he be on. It was clarified he's over here, he still took his re-ride. You guys have talked about how long this bull cut the cord has been working at this level, 35 career outs. He has allowed seven qualified rides. Some of those rides, Cooper Davis a couple times, both times over 90. Gage Gay actually rode this bull, helping him win the first major this year, Mac, for 90 as well. And there is no reason 
no reason that Kaiki should not ride this bull. If Kaiki has one weakness other than a really bad injury to his left knee right now, this season it has been bulls away from his hand. But this is a really good one to have, even if away from your hand's not your favorite direction. He's got great timing. He's going to kick and spin. You couldn't ask for a better rewrite. If this ball goes to the left, we're going to have a true test of where the knee's at. And, and I can tell you that, you know, it's, it's not a full tear. It is going to be a matter of dealing with some pain. And I think Kaiki is tough enough to deal with the pain. Hopefully, he doesn't have a problem turning that toe out, setting that spur, and using that left leg. He's going to take more time to wrap. You know, one of the unique things about this sport that, of course, our longtime fans know is often once you've done your job, you're done, right? And look at that. Jose Vitor Lemmy has gone back into the locker room content to let Kaiki. He knows there's nothing he can do. And back to your point, Ty, about applying pressure. Yeah, right? I mean, for Lemmy, doesn't do him any good to be out here watching because he knows Pacheco's got his own world to think about. That's the point differential coming into tonight. Just under 1,350 points. As good as Lemmy's score was back in the round, he still is only tied for fourth overall. So if Pacheco's at 89-ish or even better, right? I mean, there's not going to be that much of a gain or a loss tonight. No, if, if Pacheco covers this bull, I think he, you know, obviously did himself a world of good, and, and you're not going to give any advantage to Lemmy. Our world number one has already faced his first wrinkle. He chose to take another bull. He looks prepped, cut the cord. As the guys have mentioned, a different delivery coming out from the left-hand side, and now cut the cord, starting to get a little twitchy. Shoot, based on some of the other men on the clock, there it is, Pacheco on the clock yet again. That's twice tonight. And he's standing like a statue at this point. Last night he nodded at one second to go. He's now coming close to 10. There's the nod. The door is not only opened, but it has def definitely widened for our world number two. Jose Vitor Lemmy finally has the daylight and the gap he needed in terms of those overall standings. But the re-ride does not pay off for Kaiki, and that's the first crack we have seen in his armor. Yeah, and that's huge, man. It, it really is the way Jose's riding. That's the break that Jose really needed was a zero by Kaiki Tai. Uh, you can see the frustration right there. I, I still stand by how proud I am of this guy. He's a real warrior. He really is, and we knew that, you know, we knew that knee's gonna get tested before it's all said and done, and really, I'm not sure that it came down to the knee. I think he was just raised up a little too high right from the get-go, and he just he couldn't get forward enough in the jump to get over there to the left. And, you know, that's a problem that we see these guys have sometimes because they want to sit down and pry up on that rope. Our round results. What a night if you are a fan of riding. Well, right there, we've got the round showing up with a few other numbers mixed in, but Kolbaba, Aguche, Definitely there in terms of that 91 point total. And that's why we're gonna give you dual Kubota rides of the night. Ty, take the first one. Man, look at this. Red Bull swapping it up, changing ends, and just Kobabe is in perfect position. That dismount was a little sketchy. Mac Aguche was so good again. This guy has been unbelievable. Back to back nights with two huge rides. Aguche's feeling it. Well, we've begun the night talking about this duel between our one and two riders. Ty, you knew Pacheco had to keep pushing. At least he showed the fortitude to take that rewrite. Well, you know, I feel like it's something, you know, you're not going to know till it's all said and done if that's the right call or not. But, you know, if, if 
Jose, Jose's riding lights out. He, he has confidence. He's loose and cool, but before he gets on, you know he's going to ride everything. I feel like he can ride any bull here. If I'm sitting there looking at him, I'm not going to sit back with a 50-point ride. You know, that's the same as taking a zero, essentially. It, it could be like that when it comes down to it. I think he still made the right call, and everything can change tomorrow. We've seen that happen before. Without question, but Mac, I know at the beginning of the week, you didn't think it would necessarily take perfection to win this world title, but as I joked with you earlier tonight off camera, why not make perfection and so leave no doubt? Yeah, and that's exactly what Jose is going for. This is a guy that, you know, people wondered, is there pressure on him trying to chase down Pacheco? Has the pressure now shifted to Pacheco? Jose doesn't care about any of that. This is a guy that's loving competing right now and not so much competing against Kaiki, but competing about against every bull that he's getting on. And that's why I think you see him being so great. Yeah, that is another great point as well. Jose Vitor Lemmy is just a competitor at heart. Look at these standings. They narrow just a little bit again. Pacheco's lead cut down to 1,262 and change, but it really becomes for the moment the difference in their total bulls because eventually when we get to those bonus points and whoever wins and finds and fills out our final placings, well, that's where the big points are going to be. Hey everybody, Matt West here. Thanks for watching the PBR's YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to catch all the top moments from the professional bull riders. While you're at it, make sure you download the Ride Pass app and catch all of the PBR action today.